When the world's worst nuclear disaster in 25 years unfolded, Japan's Prime Minister, Nato Khan, was the man in the hot seat. As the reactors at Fukushima nuclear plant melted down, he faced the worst-case scenario, evacuating tens of millions of people from Tokyo. A year on, Nato Khan has granted an exclusive interview to 7.30. He's told how he's scuttled the plant operator's plan to pull all of its workers from the smouldering facility, a move one investigator says saved Japan. But questions still remain about Mr Khan's handling of the crisis, with new documents obtained by 7.30 revealing that his government kept the meltdown secret from the Japanese public. The ABC's North Asia correspondent Mark Willisey in Tokyo has the ultimate insider's view of the Fukushima meltdowns. It was the moment Japan's leaders knew they were in a fight for their country's very future. The day after the tsunami struck, the number one reactor building was torn apart by a hydrogen explosion. It was dramatic footage, but deep inside the reactor, something infinitely more catastrophic had already happened. The entire core had melted down. Within hours, the same would happen to reactors two and three. This was a battle against an invisible enemy. If Japan lost this battle, it would cripple the nation. So I thought it was a battle that we could not retreat from. In an exclusive interview with 7.30, former Japanese Prime Minister Nato Khan reveals how he confronted the world's worst nuclear disaster in a quarter of a century, one which threatened to engulf Japan. Secret government modelling prepared in the days after the disaster warned that radioactive plumes could reach as far as here, the biggest metropolis in the world. So Nato Khan was presented with a nightmare scenario, the evacuation of tens of millions from Tokyo and panic on an unprecedented scale. Most of the central functions of Japan's politics and economy are concentrated in Tokyo. 30 million people live in the metropolitan area, so a mass evacuation would have risked people's lives. The damage caused to Japan would have been the same as losing a war. I think we were lucky. Seated in the Prime Minister's chair as the colossal earthquake wrenched his nation, Nato Khan soon found himself dealing with multiple natural disasters. But the Fukushima crisis was compounded by human folly, both before and after the tsunami hit. My industry minister was told by the company it wanted to pull all its workers out of the Fukushima plant. If the workers abandoned the plant, all the reactors and fuel rods in the fuel pools would have melted down, causing many times more fallout than Chernobyl. I called the company president and told him a withdrawal was unthinkable, and he answered that he understood. Then, later on March the 15th, I stormed into the company's headquarters to tell them my opinion. On this critical question, I think uh, I would say that was his finest hour. And eventually, I think that he saved the nation. TEPCO wouldn't play... Yuichi Funabashi yeah. set up an independent inquiry into the Fukushima disaster. Its 400 pages of findings were also highly critical of Nato Khan. For, among other things, micromanaging the crisis and not telling the public what was going on. I think uh, they should have uh, 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 shared the information much more uh, earlier and a much more uh, forthcoming way, uh, forthcomingly with the public. Uh, it was uh, the, those elite, the, uh, the top policy planners and makers, who seemed to be more panicked than the pub public themselves. 7.30 has a summary of minutes of the Khan government's crisis management meetings from March the 11th the day the tsunami hit. And they reveal that the spectre of a catastrophic series of meltdowns was raised by an official at that very first meeting, while at the same time that risk was being played down to the public. This is a summary of a meeting that you had on March 11, a crisis meeting, when uh, someone warned at that meeting that if the emergency batteries did run out, there would or could be meltdowns. So, 
you were aware of that on the day that the, that the plant was hit, that there could be meltdowns. That was never conveyed to the public. Why was that? There were several opinions given at the time, but the view put to me by the Nuclear Safety Agency at the time was that meltdowns hadn't happened. So I absolutely did not hide anything that I knew. But it appears Mr Khan wasn't being told everything by his nuclear regulators. Because 7.30 has also obtained this document prepared by Japan's Nuclear Safety Agency revealing it had figured out just a week after the disaster that there'd been meltdowns. But the public wasn't told that for another two months. The company and the Nuclear Safety Agency couldn't grasp what was happening at the time. When I look back, the wrong information was given to me and to the public. As the person with ultimate responsibility in the government, I feel very sorry about this. For tens of thousands of Fukushima residents, that's cold comfort. A year on from the meltdowns, they remain unable to return home. Nato Khan admits Japan failed before March 11 and during the crisis. He says now it must lead the way. What I want to say to people around the world, including Australia, is that the global community needs to make the rules and regulations for nuclear power plants. Since this accident at Fukushima, I have learnt that nuclear energy can carry a very high risk. Mark Willisey in Tokyo.